Hello, Grace speaking. Hi, Grace. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, my name's Mark Keane in regards to a... Oh, hi. Hi. Yep. So you know who I am. Yes, uh, yes. I do. Yep. I, I realise I've only got till today to respond to you, and I'll be sending an email through in a written response, but I, I'm curious, Fairgo mentioned in their response that they had attempted to contact me, Universal Imports, and Andrew Peck in regards to the story before it aired. At right. no time did TVNZ ever contact me at all, or fair okay. go in regards to that, so they've blatantly lied in their response to you. And also, yeah, just, put, just put all this in your response to it, if, and if you need, a, do you need some more time, like I can give you an extension? If, um, no, um, I, 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 I can send the email through to you soon, I've, I've attached a couple of links, because I've also since that episode aired, done an interview with Andrew Peck, which is something right. fair go were unable to do. Um, okay. just to show his side of what happened but I'm somewhat disgusted that they use a freelance journalist granted they didn't name Stephen Cook but then find it okay in their response to degrade him and defame him by saying he's a pee addict and charged with drug rumours he was sacked is that normal for TVNZ to, to literally drag up crap like that in a response because um. Steve Cook is not a pee head and was, and was not, it was, he may have been fired over rumours, but rumours are rumours, they're unfounded allegations. Look, TVNZ's welcome to put what it wants in the response, and the authority will look at what they've said, and they'll look at what you've said to make a decision. I can't really comment on it oh, okay. um, specifically. Yeah, it's not really my role to make so, a judgment call on that. So, um, so what, what, will be, put, what will the BSA come up with as a decision? Like, what can I expect one way or the other? Well, they'll look at what you what you've complained about and mm -hmm. they'll look at the broadcast and they'll look at the standards and a, and basically make a consideration of how the standards apply to the broadcast and whether there's been a breach of the standards based on what was broadcast. So it's about um, the and standards then, and not the Broadcasting Act itself? Because so it's, the, it's in the, the Broadcasting the standards, Act. The, the standards are derived from the Broadcasting Act okay. and there's a section in the Act that empowers the BSA to issue codes um, and the yeah, specific sections in the Act kind of direct what standards they are. So it's it's kind of a mixture, I okay. guess. Yeah. Cool. And, and am I wrong in thinking that, uh, like, you read any article, you'll see um, usually the, the photograph with the person who took the photograph's name, acknowledgement of the source. That's one thing I was never given, even though they might claim fair use, but they've used my my own article, not just audio, they used my video parts of my productions as well, numerous times throughout that 10 minute article. So it's not just a small snippet they've used. So I'm kind yeah. of, you know, it should, am I right in thinking acknowledgement should be given? I believe I supplied you some um, snippets out of uh, the, the act in regards yeah. to that. You have, you have provided us all of this information, that's right. So am I right in thinking that acknowledgement should be given? I, I can't make a comment on that. Okay. I'll wait for the BSA to come up with its response. Yeah, the, the authority's decision will, will address the issues well, raised uh, in your complaint. Uh, yeah. As far as I know, before I can go to High Court, I have to make a complaint to TVNZ. No, that's right. And then yeah, I have yeah. to make a complaint to the BSA, so you'll just step two of step three, High Court's next. Um, because yeah. as they've said, you know, defamation, you guys can't control defamation. Fair enough. High Court can, and that's where I'll be heading to. But um, yeah. as far as acknowledgement and using my gear, I understand fair use. TV, you know, New Zealand TV have used many of my clips over many years in fair use. But it's when they go and put it on a story and then twist the narrative as opposed to the truth. That's I don't like myself being dragged into any sort of spin on what the actual truth is, which is why. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, that's. That it's so just put all this in your in your email to us. The, mm -hmm. the, the clearer you like, because the authority members will read through all the correspondence, so it's mm -hmm. better if you can put it in your own words. And, um, sure. Yeah. Well, and I, mean, I think you, yeah. you kind of raised all this in your original complaint quite okay. clearly as well, I think. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I was just practicing for my statement of claim, actually, so I thought I'd just send you that. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Okay, right. Thank you very much. Um, you have a great no day, problem. Grace. Bye now. All right. Grace can't comment, and yes, I have put everything in my initial complaint. So, now I'll just read you what I've sent them today, and um, we'll put up this piece, and we'll wait for the Broadcasting Standards Authority 
and their principles, which are derived from the Act, according to her, and see if that's okay. See you later. G'day, guys. Well, that was the phone call between me and Grace this morning. She sounded nice enough. No bone to pick with her at all. She's just doing her job. Um, but just so you guys can see what I have sent Grace this morning after that phone call, and as I said previously, I'll show you what I sent her. So here it is. Just let me share my screen, shall we? Let's share this one. Okay. So as you can see, it says to Grace, that's to Grace Tong, the BSA. Good morning, Grace. My apologies for my delay in responding. Sorry, Grace. Good of you to offer me an extension of time, though. Um, TVNZ states, I've read through TVNZ's response and completely disagree with the responses. TVNZ state that Fergo contacted myself for comment prior to the show airing on the 8th of November 2021. This is completely false. At no time did Gil Higgins or any other reporter contact myself in regards to their story cars. I would love it if TVNZ could produce evidence of themselves ever attempting to contact me in relation to the Cars episode prior to airing, as no such evidence exists. I find that their response in, in relation to Steve Cook by attaching news articles alleging Steve Cook to be a meth or pea head and claiming he was fired over rumours disgusting. Steve wrote the article Breakdown Shakedown, which I then published on multiple forums. The defamation issues will be dealt with in the appropriate manner in high court and I shall be seeking redress for the defamation. Can you explain how mentioning a Norfolk pine is a veiled threat, which TVNZ allege? Hmm? Um, bear in mind, I'm fully aware of Savon Kelly's residential address. Yeah, I know where you live um, and have perused that location. Brand new cul-de-sac, no bushes anywhere only to discover there are no bushes where any so-called photograph could have been hiding, taking snapshots of her as alleged in the Fair Go story. Fair Go state in the show, the emails kept on coming. That's exactly what they said, but the emails kept on coming and then they switch over to Gil and then proceed to read out an email from Steve Cook to Sabon during the episode. This was in no way from Andrew Peck or Universal Imports, yet Sabon reacted to Gil Higgins, reading it as if Andrew Peck or Universal Imports had written it. This was absolutely misleading the viewer. Andrew Peck and Universal Imports have received nasty backlash from the hit piece created by TVNZ for several weeks after the show aired due to TVNZ's misrepresentation of the facts. The candid photograph mentioned by TVNZ in their response was a still frame from a video taken when Andrew Peck returned to recover their loan vehicle, which is publicly available on my YouTube channel. And it amazes me that fair go TVNZ could not even get this simple fact correct. Several times during the car episode, um, video and audio of my productions were used under fair use, which I comprehend. However, I uh, no acknowledgement was given as to the source myself, which breaches the Broadcasting Act. Is it normal in a response to a complaint for TVNZ to further defame people, alleging veiled threats, or insinuating that a freelance reporter they used in their story to be a drug user? I have replied to their pathetic response in my usual form by publishing their further attempted to degrading responses publicly on numerous social media forums. Here is a link. I comprehend that BSA is just another place to waste time, but a necessary step prior to filing a notice of proceedings at High Court, which will be my next step. In the TVNZ response to my initial complaint to them, prior to involving the Broadcaster Standards Authority, TVNZ treated my questions from the 2nd of November 2021 like they were in relation to a show, Cars, which had not even aired for another six days in their response to me, showing how poorly TVNZ can even read simple correspondence or Official Information Act requests. You already have this submitted to you. 
I am truly disgusted by the continuing defaming and insinuating tone from TVNZ's responses. I do not make veiled threats and are insulted by these further comments within their responses. As TVNZ have proven themselves to twist narratives, I did not wish to risk having further unfounded allegations from TVNZ made in relation against me. This is the only reason I did not waste my time contacting Gil Higgins Direct via phone prior to the show. And I wish to reiterate, at no time ever did TVNZ or Fairgo contact myself about their attack piece on Universal Imports, as they claim in their response to the BSA. This is a complete lie, and I would love to see any evidence of this, given none exists. Because as you can guess, guys, I can't obviously prove something that didn't exist or didn't happen, didn't happen. They're saying they contacted Mr. Keane before airing of the show for fairness. No, they didn't. And I would love to see Fairgo produce evidence of that little fucking lie. Um, it would appear that in my response to a complaint, TVNZ has simply doubled down by making further untrue statements and continue to attempt to defame other parties involved. I especially like how they took your own sensitivities into consideration. Grace, when quoting my free speech, affirmed under the New Zealand Borer, 1990 section 14. And in case you guys don't know, let me say it again, gives everyone the right and freedom to seek, impart, and receive information and opinions of any kind in any form. So, when they censored my own words for yourself by censoring the word cox in their response, how PC of them. You may not be aware of the interview I did with Andrew Peck explaining what Fairgo proved unable to do, his side of the issue as I do not censor or manipulate information for a des desired narrative, unlike TVNZ. Here is a link to that interview, and I supply them a link to it. I look forward to the BSA's findings, warmest regards me. All right, and yes, I will blur out my phone number. Right, guys, so and as you can see, there's the video I released the other day of the um, TVNZ response, and next to it here is the interview I did with Andrew Peck. So, what do you reckon? Obviously, it's just the stepping process you have to go through. I already um, have someone willing to back my um, filings at the High Court, so it's not an issue for me but I am going to thoroughly enjoy taking TVNZ to the woodshed over this one. They lied, they know they did, and in their responses, they even continue to allege Steve Cook as being a pee freak. You know, they might not have named Steve Cook as the um, freelance journalist, but anybody who's watched my stuff knows it was Steve Cook's article. And for them to attach newsprint articles from stuff in the New Zealand Herald about allegations made to Steve. Crazy. I, I don't believe they've attached any um, court findings that he was um, ever prosecuted for P drug offences, was he? No, he was sought, fired over rumours. Not even founded allegations, but rumours. You know, I guess they've got to protect their image, oldstuff.co.nz. Give an old Mr. Boshier fucking ownstuff.co.nz. You know, a, a court judge owns a news article or a news um, thing. It's, it's very twisted. Anyway, there you go, guys. Just thought you'd be interested to know. And we'll see what the Broadcasting Standards Authority do. Are they just another gatekeeper? Are they going to actually do the job they're supposed to do? Or are they going to prove to be as useless as the rest of the fucking government organisations out there? Hmm? Probably the latter. Anyway, see you in all in high court, guys. And uh, yeah, TVNZ, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Mm -hmm.